with webstarts.com. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the webstarts free website builder. It's the perfect way to build any kind of website that you'd like. So if you're looking to build a website to convey information or to sell products like an e-commerce store, or just to create a blog, webstarts is the perfect free website builder for you. All right, before I get into the video, be sure to tap the subscribe button and also ring the notification bell. That way you'll be the first to find out when I release a new video on web design, internet marketing, search engine optimization, and things of that nature. So if you're interested in those, tap subscribe and ring the notification bell to find out when I created a new video. All right, to get started in this video, I've gone to webstarts.com and I'm going to start out by creating a free account. You can do that by clicking on get started, it's free. In the next step, you'll choose a design for your website. You can choose from any one of the designs. They're all 100% customizable. So you can change them as much or as little as you'd like. And they can also be changed at any time. So you can't make a mistake by picking the wrong one. You can select the various designs by category by choosing a category from the left panel here. So for this example, I'm just going to choose this one. I'm going to hover over it and click select. And the next step, you're going to go ahead and enter your name along with your email address and, of course, choose a password. These are standard things that you've come to accept when signing up for a web application. All right, once you've chosen that password, go ahead and click sign up, and then you'll be asked to verify your phone number with an SMS text message. So you'll enter your phone number in here and then you'll enter the code that's sent to your phone and that will ensure that you're a real person. So I'm gonna do that without recording just so you, I won't be sharing my phone number and that sort of thing. And then I'll meet you back on the other side where we'll select the web address for our website. All right, I've added that text message code and I'm now ready to select a web address for my website. In this step, there are two options. The first option is to use a free.webstarts.com address. The next option over here on the right is to use a top level domain name like your very own .com .org or .net. If you select that option, you will have to upgrade to one of the paid subscription plans before it will begin to work with your website. But if you just wanna get started with a free account for now, you can do that by entering in a subdomain right here, like free website builder. 2020 and click continue. If you want, you can also click choose later if you can't think of a web address that you'd like to use at the time that you're signing up. Okay, now I'm in the dashboard view. I'm welcomed by this video that shows me how to get started using the WebStarts free website builder. You're welcome to watch that video or you can just exit out of it to get started. And then you'll see the rest of the things that are located in this dashboard view. Up here in the top left, you have the ability to toggle between websites in your account or create a new website, like a second or third website if you want. Up here in the top right, you'll find a lot of your account-wide settings, that sort of thing. By hovering over the thumbnail to your website and clicking Edit Site, you will load the WebStarts page editor. That's where you can begin to make edits and changes to the pages of your website, and we'll do that in a minute. Here's a link to your website, and then you can see there's another edit site button along with add domain and upgrade. Keep in mind, if you add a top level domain name, you will have to upgrade to a paid subscription plan, and that domain name will be automatically connected to your website. You can also use a domain name that you've registered with another service previously. You'll just need to make a couple of changes to the settings of that domain. Here you'll find the applications that are included with your WebStarts website, files and folders, store if you're selling products online, a blog, email marketing if you want to send email marketing emails to your customers, business email, that's just a way to get a matching email address to go with your domain name, roles and permissions in case you want to give other users access to your account, that sort of thing, backups, contacts, chat, a lot of applications in here. All right, getting into the page editor, we click on edit site. And once again, this is where we're gonna be able to edit and make changes to the website. Web starts is entirely drag and drop, so you can click to drag any element on the page. We call each thing that appears on the page an element. So for example, this is a button, this is a text element, and then you can add things like image elements uh, using 
what we call the file manager. You can upload photos from your local computer, or you can even find photos using our image search functionality, that kind of thing. If you want to remove any element from the page, all you need to do is select it and then click the red X attached to it. You can also do that by selecting it and then pressing the delete key on the keyboard. You can go back at any time using the undo and redo arrows that you can find up here in the top right. One important thing to keep in mind is that because Web Starts is truly drag and drop, all of the elements are stacked on top of each other in layers. So it is possible to put an element, for example, behind another layer by accident, and then it might seem like that element has disappeared. So be careful to uh, keep track of the layers where you place the various elements of your website. If you want to move them forward or back where you can do that by selecting the element and then selecting the appropriate attached icon. When you're ready to edit other pages of your website, you can toggle between the pages that you'd like to edit up here. So for example, you can just toggle over to the contact page and the page editor will load up that contact page where you can begin to uh, edit and modify the elements on that page. Another important thing to consider with every page of your website is divided into three primary sections. The top section is called the header. Anything that you drag into the header will appear at the top of every page. We do this so that things like your business name, your logo, and your menu appear in the same place on each page of your website without you having to meticulously place them in the exact same page. And we do the same thing with the footer, which is the bottom section. So anything you drag into the top or bottom sections appear in the same place at the top and the bottom of each page of your website. The middle section is called the body, and that's mainly where you'll be changing most of the content from page to page. Uh, keep in mind when you drag something into this footer, for example, it's gonna be highlighted in green, and that's how you know that it's in the footer or attached to the footer. All right, let's try adding a new page. You can go File, New to add a new page. You can choose to save that page or not. And then you can select either copy an existing page, which might save you a little bit of time if you don't want to create an entirely new layout, or you can just select a blank page if you don't mind doing that. And then you just give your page a name and click Create Page. And then the page editor will navigate to that new page. Since I created a blank page, there's no content in this page, but I can add that content easily by clicking the Add option and then just dragging text or images or whatever other elements I'd like to appear on that page. If you'd like to change the color scheme for your website, you can find that under the design tab. Uh, under colors, there's a various, a variety of color palettes you can choose from. Once you select a color palette and then you select the color tool, you'll notice the selected color palette dominates the top part of the color palette modal. You still have access to all the standard colors as well as grayscale, and you can still customize your colors, of course, and you can even extract colors from an image if you're looking to match your color scheme with a photo or different photos on your website. Under the design tab, you'll also find the ability to set default fonts for all of your text headings. So if you have a large heading, you can select the type of font that you want to use over and over again, along with the size, the color, and then some of the other attributes as well. If you ever want to add a new font that you don't see there, select a text box, click on the font dropdown, then click add fonts, and then you'll be able to search and add from about 730 fonts there in that window. You have easy access to both the blog and the store applications from the page editor, but your store and your blog applications are primarily managed using the dashboard. So if you go back out to the dashboard, you will see that you can access your store and your blog applications through these panels here. That way, you, for example, when you're just creating a blog, you'll just click new post and you'll focus on typing the title and the body of the blog. And then of course the blog will just appear on your website under the blog tab and I haven't created any posts yet, but your posts will appear in that section. And if you're working with a store, you'll click on the store and you'll automatically be set up to accept credit card payments online. And then once you do that, you'll also have the opportunity to create your products, your titles, descriptions, prices, that sort of thing for all the different products that you want. And the store is really full featured. So 
you can really dig into that. We have an entire separate video on how to create an online store. Well, that was a quick rundown of what it's like to use the WebStart's free website builder. I didn't cover all of the functions, of course, in this video. But once again, there is a getting started video when you sign up for an account, so I encourage you to watch that. The only other thing that I really want to draw your attention to is to make sure that when you're ready, you add a domain name to your website. That way you have a nice top level domain name like a .com, .org, or .net. And uh, remind you that if you've already registered that domain name at GoDaddy or Google or some other place, you can use that with your Web Starts website as well. You just need to select, I already have a domain name, enter the domain name and continue. You will need to be on one of the paid subscriptions, whether you register a new domain name in Web Starts or whether you're bringing your domain name from another service like GoDaddy or Google. Um, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to send any questions that you might have to support at webstarts.com and also be sure to smash the subscribe button and ring that notification bell and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.